Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! And for the 29th time, your Messiah has come home. Boy, it is, guess what, shocking. Another rainy, cold, brisk, icky Monday. Once again, bad weather on Mondays. I don't know. This is like a sign from, you know, the heavens. I don't know. Um, so like I said, 29 times now I have come into your lives it's so much craziness to talk about. We we got breaking stories. See, I'm, I'm so flustered. There's so many breaking news stories coming out right now. We got some recaps. We got some games to play a little bit later. Ta-da. This once again. Um, and once again, I just want to remind everybody right off the top. Please share. Click share on this. So your friends can watch, your enemies, your family, your next door neighbor, your aunt twice removed third cousin, so they can all watch. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, check out CycloneComedy.com. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook too. And you know what? We are going to start this whole big shing ding off right after this. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian, Tim Bosch. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. Yeah. MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Check it out. Hey, you got the guts. Step in the cage with Cycle. And like I said, we got so much to start, so much to talk about, so much to start off with. Where do we start off with? You know what? I'm going to start off with something very small, actually. And build our way up to a giant crescendo. That's the word of the day, by the way. Crescendo. Eight word score on Scrabble, I believe. Um, CES MMA, 53 it was. For the third time now, John Gotti III, from right out here on Long Island, okay, finishes with a TKO. The second time in a row now, under 30 seconds. Listen, the John Gotti, when he was a kid growing up, he was a tough guy. If you don't know about the, 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 the real John, he was a Golden Gloves boxer. So it's not shocking that it's in the DNA. And John Gotti the third is a serious, serious MMA fighter. He got into MMA when Gotti Jr. was in jail just to keep himself, you know, on the straight and narrow, not get in trouble. And his love grew and his, and his abilities grew and he is seriously... Look, only 3-0 as a pro, so... I don't know if Uncle Dana White's going to be calling or anytime soon or... Like he, he himself said, UFC isn't the only game in town. You know, Bellator is 1FC, Ryzen, and we'll be talking about Ryzen later on. There's plenty of avenues he can go. But somebody, somebody very soon is going to be calling this kid. And the last name really doesn't matter so much because his abilities inside the cage 
are freaking phenomenal. Um, what he did was uh, he was fighting uh, Josh Zuckerman. Josh Zuckerman starts off throwing low leg kicks. He catches one of them. Counter, well, it's this hand. Counter right hand to the jaw. Knocks him out. Flurry of left hands. A ground and pound just ba-bam, ba-bam, ba-bam. That's the only way I can describe it. It's ba-bam, ba-bam, ba-bam. Rev jumps in, stops it. TKO. Like 31, 32 seconds. Um... Also, uh, well, you know what, Lisa? How about sending through since his cousin went to school? Um, how about a connection through a connection? You know, like, uh, my cousin knows your cousin, and that, 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 that you know, like, I would love, first of all. Remember something. Um, Sliwa grew up on on our block, so you know, to have a Gotti here and a Gotti here to be surrounded by Gottis might be very interesting for me. Um, but anyways, you do it, you do it. Oh wow, you you will. Thank you. Aww. Um, I guess now I have to be a good cousin to you. Oh well. Um, but I'm bumch. Anyways, like I was saying, on that card also, Tony Gravely wound up winning the vacant bantamweight championship uh, over uh, Cody Norby. 36 seconds into the fight, Bobby, that's video clip number one. Be nice. Tell you what, he's staying glued to that arm. Nice shot by Gravely. Oh, oh he's already it. knocked him out. Ouch. That, that, that makes my head rattle. And not because my head normally rattles, but that is, that's vicious. Um, we, we, okay, I, no more beating around the bush. Let's just get into UFC 230. Happened this week. End. Week, end weekend. At the Garden. The card was, let's just call it what it is, a lot less delectable than what we're used to here in New York. Three title fights. History being made. Then this card. Did, did, to all of us watching, to all of us in the know, to describe it to you that don't know, the card was basically as mediocre as mediocre could get. At least that's what it looked like on paper. Some bouts actually shown some oomph, you know, some some chutzpah, some some kajonis. Um and one of them is from a kid right here. Um, he lives in Baldwin, I believe. Not too sure. I don't, you know, don't go stalking him, you know, or anything like that. Shane Burgos was being rocked by Kurt Hollibaugh. And then, you want to know what happened? This happened. Play number two, Bobby. Oh! oh! Burgos smiled immediately, trying to shake this one off. But an early knockdown for Kurt Holliba. He's looking for that arm bar. He's got it. He's got it. Man, that is tight. That is tight. He's tapping. He's wow, tapping. Shane Burgos. Ow, my arm hurts. Holy free hoties. That is like an arm bar from hell. Look, here's the deal. When you outstretch someone's arm like that, hey, Karen, PS114 in the house, hey, hey, hey. When you stretch an arm out like that, your elbow joints go snap, crackle, and pop. And man, Kurt, Kurt snatched defeat out of the hands of victory is the only thing I can say about that.
Um, so yeah, Shane's on him on a beautiful, nice little hot streak he has going. From Tiger Shulman's MMA and and when Tiger Shulman's gym first opened up, who would have thought that they would be the home to MMA fighters? Because Shane's far from the only one. It's good business, very good business. Um, let's talk middleweights because basically the car, the main card was a plethora, if you will, another word of the day, plethora of middleweight matchups. And like I told everybody last week, go back and watch the show. I told you guys it would be Israel Adesanya's coming out party. And sure enough, that is exactly what happened. Israel Adesanya has sent out a message to the middleweight division. Yo, mofos, I is here. You know, now look, every once in a while, a fighter takes a quantum leap, okay? First, you know, not really first, but, but in this generation, it was John Jones. Took a quantum leap in MMA. Then, never Joe. Um, then what we're going to, the next jump, was Ronda Rousey. She brought it even more into the mainstream. She crossed over. Then it was Connor to take the next quantum leap. MMA, like every other sport, is cyclical. Right now they're looking for the next big thing. And you know what? Israel Adesanya is it. He is the next one to take that big jump, that next quantum leap. And he's been doing a lot of interviews recently, and I'll tell you what, he said something very, very, very interesting. He said he was turned down by every company to, to do some you know type of sponsorship deal. And now that he's red hot, they're all coming with their hands like this to him. That's a good way to think. That's right here. Okay? So, I'm putting this out there to you guys. If you own a business, if you know of a business that is looking for brand explosion, right here. Hit me up on Facebook, Psyche Prods. Hit me up on CycloneComedy.com. And I'll work out a sponsorship deal sweet for you. Because remember, I got two great shows. This one and the Cyclone Variety Show. So see, we can all work together. But getting back to Israel and, and Derek Brunson. Derek, for the first time. Hello. Look at this. It's like my whole family. It's like the only time my family's ever doing anything with me. And I accept that. So, hello. Hello there. Um, Derek has always gotten take, takedowns. And for the first time, he didn't score a takedown at all. Not only that, Israel has slowly, from his first fight to this fight, being taken down has diminished. This card, not taken down. He is improving exponentially. Another word of the day, exponentially. And he talks the game and he puts it up. And that's, that's what everyone wants in a crossover fighter. Okay? So do me a favor. Go to YouTube. After this show, and after, you know, the rest of the night shows, you know, check out Israel Adesanya on YouTube. You're going to be amazed by his highlights. Um, knees to the body, cracked him over the, over the top of the head a couple of times. Short elbows, just everything worked for Israel. And he's finally faced someone... On that next level. Now, look, here's the deal. He wants a title shot. And you can't blame the kid for wanting a title shot. But he's just not ready. He, I think he needs one more 
fight, whether if it's against like a Jacare, who one who I'm going to talk about in a second, whether it's a Luke Rockhold, whether it's a Yo Romero, he needs that one bigger level fight left before he can say he wants that title shot. Now, like I said, we're going to speak about Jacare. Jacare defeating Long Island's own, the All American from Baldwin, New York, that way. Um, I actually, I think it's like that way. Not that way, more like that way. Anyways, Chris started out strong as, strong as Fook, okay? Yes, William, you know what? He is like a young John Jones, and God willing, he does not at all turn into a John Jones outside the cage. Uh, never, Brandon. That's why I have Facebook. Um, so Chris started out strong. His jab was working solid. It was busting Jacare up, okay? He's breathing heavy. His nose is busted in. And you want to know how tough Jacare is? Jacare was fighting a couple a couple years now, more like 15 years ago, I think, against Henry Gracie in a in a gi uh, jiu-jitsu tournament. And he broke Jacare's arm, and Jacare would not tap. Stands up with... Defending like this with an arm just dangling. That's how tough Jacques Ray is. Okay. So he digs down deep. He starts to get into the clinch with, with Chris Weidman. And he's landing knees. He's landing uppercuts. He, he's taking it to Chris really bad. Right. And now you can see Chris starting to backpedal a little bit. Jacare putting the pressure on him. Jacare coming forward. And going into that third round, man, there is no two ways about it. No, Brendan, he is not garbage. First of all, Chris Weidman means more to the sport of MMA than just being a fighter. Remember, he was the ambassador that, that helped bring MMA to New York. All right? It would not have happened at all without his... Willingness to go the extra mile, okay. the The thing about it is, he's getting up there in age. The weight cut is tougher for him now than ever before. And look, he he needs to think about moving up. But the only problem is, if he moves up to light heavyweight, those guys are just going to pound him. Honestly, I thought that because when Jacare landed that final shot, which basically it hit him in the, in the top of the head. That's all it did. It didn't hit the jaw, it didn't hit the cheek, didn't hit the ear, didn't hit the back of the head. It hit the top of the head. And he's and Chris is out like this and just collapses. If you didn't see it. He was out. First of all, it's a definite concussion. There's no two ways about it. One eye looked this way, one eye looked that way. Okay, he's messed up. Now, did Dan Mergliata mess up by not, you know, waving the fight off right there? I don't know, because we at home, we, we in a bar, we in a restaurant, see 18 different angles of this stuff. A ref only sees the angle that he's looking at, okay? Tunnel vision. Can't see anything else. Jacare, class act, doesn't want to throw any more punches, just drops one light punch, and then Dan waves it off. I'm not going to beat Dan up the way everybody else in the media and, and the way f a lot of MMA fans are beating him up today. It's just a, he just, I'm going to believe to the day I die, he was just in a bad position, a little spot, to n not see what Chris looked like. Okay. Um, yeah, he had a puncher's chance. And you know what? That's very true, William, because going into this fight, you figure between a wrestler and a jiu-jitsu guy, this fight was going to be on the ground dry-humping each other. Jacare's stand-up is not to be taken lightly. That's why 
I don't mind seeing Jacare against, you know, Israel Adesanya. I really don't. I, I think that would be a fair match. I'd rather see Luke Rockhold against Israel right now, but or Polo Costa, who's also undefeated. Um, I'm not going to really go into that much of the main event because, like the X says, it it is what it is. DC did what he had to do. He avoided that right hand from Derek. Derek Lewis, I think, threw that punch twice and whiffed. And DC said earlier today he actually felt the wind from that punch go by. He escaped. Now, now look, I'll get into the whole Brock Lesnar, DC stuff in a few minutes, too. Um, but look, DC now, I mean, he's cementing his legacy. He is pound for pound, number one. You can't even argue it anymore. I mean, before you could have said this one, that one. He's on the GOAT list now. He absolutely is. Even though, personally, I'm not an AKA guy. I'm really not. you got to give this guy props. You really do. Um... Plus, he's one of the best analysts Fox has. Although he's not better than my guy, Dominic Cruz, but I'll keep my personal opinion to myself, even though I just let it go. Uh, now let's talk about Crown. Let's move over away from MMA for a minute and, and talk about this disgusting garbage of a card. We go from mediocre card to garbage card called Crown WWE Crown Jewel. It's the first time the WWE has been in Saudi Arabia since the Saudi journalist, um, I don't want to mess up his name, uh, uh, Jamal Hashigi was murdered and, and disem- dismembered in Turkey. I'm not, look, this is not Fox News. I'm not getting into it. This isn't CNN. I'm not getting into it. But enough of the wrestlers in the company didn't want to go for a reason. Just because you can make oodles and oodles of money doesn't mean you should. The money in Saudi Arabia is blood money. That's what it is. If you think the sheiks and the heads of over there, are are trickling down the money. I got a bridge I'd like to sell you. That's not the case, okay? They shouldn't have been there. And plus, they're going to be there eight more times coming soon. They have lined up. And, And I don't understand the WWE's concept. First of all, their writing sucks more than any TV program on television. And coming, but yet, evolution here in Long Island a couple weeks ago, you know, was one of the best cards ever. So you go from the highs of evolution to absolute mediocrity in Crown Jewel. Okay, especially with half the card not wanting to go go over there. Now look, they rolled out Hulk Hogan again. Why? Why Hogan? You want to roll Hogan out? Do it here in the States. Okay. There's no reason why Hulk Hogan, at the age of 837, needs to be rolled out like he's Bernie and Weekend at Bernie's, for Christ's sake. It's just not necessary. Um, you, you, I don't mind the bar retaining the SmackDown tag, time, tag team belts. Against New Day. All those guys work well together. They're crisp. There's Evan and Flo. And a great story they tell in the ring. Uh, Lesnar beating Strowman. Braun Strowman, okay. And I I, I don't think I could, could describe it any way other than this is that he is like 
a glorified JBL. He is becoming a champion's version of Coco Beware. They're jerking this guy around. Now, if there was a second tier pro level wrestling group, maybe Strowman could head there. But there isn't. And, and I think he's stuck. Unless he goes to like New Japan or something like that. They're, mis- they're miswrite- miswriting scripts for Strowman. Point blank. Now you put the belt on, on Brock. I got news for you WWE fans. He now has two fights left on his contract. One of them is obviously against AJ Styles. The other one maybe a rematch against Strowman. Here's the deal. He's in the USADA pool now. Okay, That's a fact. That is a fact that is undeniable. Okay. Now. Oh, nuts. Okay. He, he It's undeniable th- th- where his levels are. There, there's no reason why Brock should keep being able to play both hands against each other. Okay. Once in a while, WWE. Once in a while, UFC. No, buddy. One or the other. I needed this. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't see why they allow it. I get it. He's a money draw. Both are making money off of him, so what? It's two different trainings. And, yes, I, I know wrestling is, is scripted. WWE right now, badly scripted. He doesn't need... To be doing this. If you don't want to get really punched in the face in the UFC. Stick in the WWE. You're a superstar there. Okay. What's he going to do against DC? DC is going to ankle pick him to death. Take him down. And uh, I'll actually be talking about that in a little while, William. Um, Very true, Dennis. Um, he, He... it's just so frustrating. That's that's what I could say. It's frustrating. End of story. Okay. Um, now I have big issues with Shane O'Mac winning the best in the world. Are you freaking kidding me? Seriously. You got. Pro wrestling, look, if you wanted to have it where, you know, the Miz gets hurt and someone else from the back comes in and replaces him and says, Miz gave the, his blessing that I take over, fine. I got no beef with that. I, I don't mind that type of a, of a replacement. But Shane, Shane McMahon, really? When mommy, daddy, and sister write the script, brother freaking wins? Look. In no freaking way should Shane McMahon beat any professional wrestler. It's unbelievable. It is unfathomable. Another word of the day. Unfathomable. Okay? Zig survives 100 incidents left and right. And he's going to lose to Shane McMahon. I don't believe it. What's more believable is I'm GQ sexiest man of the year. That's more freaking believable. Um, let's see. So yeah, yeah, like 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 I said. And look, as far as the the brothers of destruction, Kane and, and Taker against DX, Sean and, and Hunter, look. I understand why Kane agreed to this fight. Glenn Jacobs is now the mayor of, uh, what is it, uh, Knox, Tennessee, Knox County, Tennessee. That money he's making for, from the Saudis, that blood money, is coming to the U.S. to help Tennessee, his city in Tennessee. I don't like it, but I, I can understand it. Shawn Michaels. 
I believe altogether got something like twenty million dollars for the appearance, b- between press stuff and, and everything else he did. That's something I read, but I don't know how true that is. Are you kidding me? Undertaker looked slower than me on walking on ice. Really, he's looking his age. Triple H, at least, was able to move somewhat until he tore his pec muscle. It's time to let the young guys completely run everything, sink or swim, hell or high water, just pass the baton and step the hell aside. Okay? Because in combat sports, we have this thing that... that Everyone in MMA, MMA fans always say, oh, Bellator does these old fights. Bellator does these old fights. They have the old-timers league. It's exactly what the WWE is doing. In part with their bad writing, it has to stop. Stop the madness, WWE. Um, so, now that I am off that diatribe, check out CycloneComedy.com. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. Please, for the love of God, share this video. Okay? If you're watching it, the share button. It's really simple. If I can figure out how to do it, I know you can because you're supposed to be smarter than me. Okay? Um, now, when we get back, we're going to talk some big stories, some breaking news, and some more games. When we come back, right after this. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Mergliata. I'm Derek Brunson. I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. Talk about bad WWE writing. Here comes more bad writing. Oh, my freaking God. So late last night, the story breaks, and I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I, I, I still, quite frankly, don't freaking believe it. I, I think I'm being punked. Um, Floyd Mayweather heads to Japan, signing on with Ryzen to fight undefeated 20-year-old kickboxing sensation, Tenshin uh, Nasukawa. Now look, here's the deal. Tenshin is their ultimate star. There's no brighter star on the island of Japan than this kid. Okay, he's 27-0 in kickboxing, and he's 4-0 in MMA, and he's tearing people apart in both sports. Floyd Mayweather comes over. I'm going to fight him. I'm going to cross over. Really, Floyd? Now, the money isn't set yet. The rule set isn't set yet. The glove size isn't set yet but what is set yet is it happens on December 31st which by the way is a Monday which by the way is also the night of the PFL championships at the garden called Madison Square um now look Ryzen is doing this for one reason to make money Okay, because what it, let, let's face facts about Floyd, and nobody hates him more than me. Whatever Floyd touches turns to gold. Okay, it, that's plain and simple. All right, it is, it's, it's freaking nuts, Lisa. That's what it is. It's not crazy, it's freaking nuts. The, the, the fact of the matter is, if you think for one second, okay, that Floyd Mayweather is going to agree to four ounce gloves, six ounce gloves, eight ounce gloves, ten ounce gloves. If you think he is going to agree to allow elbows to be thrown, if you think he's going to agree that kicks be thrown, I got another bridge. After I sell you one about the WWE, I got another bridge to sell you. I got two bridges. And none in my mouth. Look, this is going to be a three, three minute round exhibition fight. Now, look, this 20 year old kid, 
he just won the lotto. No, you know what he did by signing on to fight Floyd Mayweather? Wait, I'm going to need to sip of this. He's getting reparations for World War II. That's what it is. And, and I know that's effed up to say, and that's way below the belt. No. This is reparations for World War II. Plain and simple. Because the kid's going to make money hand over fist. The world... For Japan knew of him. People that, that like combat sports knew of him. Now the world is going to know of him. And Floyd's going to dance around. Floyd's going to roll that el- roll that shoulder, throw a jab, roll the shoulder, throw another jab. And, I mean, it's going to be in Japan, so I don't know if he's going to bring over Adelaide Bird to be one of the, the judges or, you know, for him, but that's nuts. It's going to be, a, at least Connor F- Floyd ha- had something, you know. This... This is a money grab beyond money grabs. Uh, and speaking of boxing, let's stay on the boxing topic. My girl, Heather Hardy, who won the WBO Featherweight Championship at Madison Square Garden, has said unless they decide they want to unify that featherweight title into one champion, she's sticking with Bellator. And I am damn proud to hear her say that. Because your MMA game is good. It was getting better. You know, it was a little stagnant at times. She, I, I'm, I'm infatuated by, the, by her. But, but it's good that she wants to stick to Bellator MMA unless they want to unify the belts. Otherwise, she just remains... Champion sitting on the sidelines. And I'm, I'm actually very, very proud of her for sticking by her guns. Um, talk about the, the Floyd mess and PFL be on the same night. The UFC just announced that on January 26th, they are going to be in Anaheim, California. That same night, at the forum in Inglewood, which is only like, 30, 32 miles apart, I believe, um, is the finals of the heavyweight Grand Prix between Fedor and Bader. Let's see which company gets better ratings, faster sellout, more hype. Don't be surprised if it's the Bellator card. Right now, as far as what is out there. It looks like it's going to be a super fight between T.J. Dillashaw and and uh, Henry Cejudo headlining the UFC card. It's a great fight, but you know what? I'd rather watch Fedor and Bader. New heavyweight champ in Bellator. I'd rather see that. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that, that takes a lot of cajones to have same city, 30 somewhat miles apart, same time. First of all, you want to know what that is? That's going to be a press nightmare. I am so thankful I don't have to be out there covering that because it's hard enough covering stuff close in the area, like a day or two apart. Same night, I don't want no piece of that. Um, let's see, we could do one more story. Uh, Just a really quick note, Ben Askren is now zeroing in on a target since he called out three full divisions, you know. Um, he's zeroing in on Darren Till to fight him in London. I, I... If I was Darren Till, I wouldn't take this fight. I, I think Ben will just take him down. Some people say just lay on him for a couple of rounds, but Ben's really not somebody you want to mess around with. He's really not. And Ben's fast enough on the inside fighting that 
Darren's not going to be able to touch him. And I like Darren Till a lot. In range, he's never going to be able to touch him. Ben's going to just... It, his movement side to side is like a windshield wiper. Okay, It's the only way to describe it. And his head's never on center line either, which, if you don't know, is straight up perpendicular with you. Always off center. Okay? Um, now, I want to give you guys a reminder. Coming in right after me is Pinups Cool Cats and Comics. Then it's my house show. Then it's Gaki Radio. So look, here is everything you need in your life right here, Strong Island Television. Keep it right here. Don't go nowhere because you know what? There's nothing else to do. Even if you could do something else, you're not going to. Keep it right here, all right? Um, now, when we come back, it's game time right after this. I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm a creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gastelum. This is Mark Gumbel. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man, Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock, and you're getting tapped out in the cage with Psycho. Now, before I get into this, I just want to remind everybody, once again, please, pretty, please, pretty, 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 please, click share, all right? It's not that hard to do. Done. Job done. One simple job. Click share. Um, so on this date, all right, Davi Ramos turns 32 years old. I don't even remember being 32. I woke up. I went to bed last night. I was 18. I woke up this morning and I'm 44. It's the truth. Um, let's see who else's birthday. Uh, PFL's Beblukat Magomedov is 28. That was a million years ago for me. I don't even remember that. And Amir Khan turns 24. Forget about it. I don't even. I can't even remember 24. I don't even remember 42. How about that? Um, so also on this date in 2005, the tough, uh, the tough two finale happened. Diego Sanchez, unanimous decision win over Nick Diaz. You had six foot seven inch tall Brad Imes uh, losing a split decision to Rashad Evans. It looked it looked like Drago and Rocky. But Rashad's black, so it's really not. It's more like Drago Apollo Creed. I don't know why I said Rocky, but like Drago Rocky. Um, so um, also UFC 138 in 2011 went down. Mark Munoz TKOing Chris Leibin. And then, of course, Leibin wound up popping for some... Not good stuff, and uh, serving a one-year suspension right after that. Uh, Henan Barrow, rear, na rear naked choking, Brad One Punch Picket. That's what happened on this date. Now, since there is only let me check, yep, only two questions, I am going to answer both questions. Rudy Asher. Did Jacare jump the field for his title shot with his dominance? Well, look, like I said earlier, he didn't dominate. He finished strong. He he endured. Okay, he was getting pieced up and came back. So, does he deserve a shot? Well, first of all, Gastelum is fighting Whitaker first. Second in line should be Jacare. Jacare. Unless you want to do a Jacare Israel Adesanya and then have that winner fight for the title after Gastelum. That's the only fair way to do it. And question number two comes from Brad May. What's next for Israel after decimating Brunson? Well, look, I would lo like I said earlier, also, I would love to see him fight Luke Rockhold. I don't mind if it's Jacare. I don't mind if it's Yoel Romero, but Kelvin is getting Whitaker first. Now, 
one of you two guys is going to be lucky enough to win a prize. So Rudy is heads, Brad is tails. And flipping the Japanese quarter, which is just, look. No, it was not nose, you know, actually, yeah, it was nose candy and PEDs, William. That's what he popped for, just to let you know. Um, like the John Jones special. Okay, here we go. W the winner is, whoop, let me do that. that. That sucked. Okay, the winner is Tails. Brad May, you, sir, are a winner of a prize, and I will be sending that prize out Wednesday because tomorrow's election day and post offices be closed. So you'll just have to wait. Um, before we go, since there's such a turnover, I'm going to give you my new pound-for-pound pound rankings. And look, I don't do a 15 ranking, okay? I do a top 12 ranking. Top 12 is just so much better, okay? And like, like I reminded you guys before, please share this, all right? I appreciate it. Um, coming in at number 12... Is the aforementioned now ranked on my listing? And my listing is more realistic than what is on the UFC website. But I'm not going to hold any grudges. Israel Adesanya. Number 11, I believe, is Jessica Andrade. I have Henry Cejudo at number 10. Amanda Nunes, Lioness, at number 9. And number 8, I believe Tyron Woodley fits in nicely there. Number seven, Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker. Number six, Max Holloway, because it's a blessed era. Um, number five, Tony Ferguson, El Kakui, the, the, the freak that he is, is number five, pound for pound. Fourth, pound for pound, best, Stipe Miocic. How can you go wrong with that man? Number three, T.J. Pillishaw, Killershaw, Dillashaw. He, he's climbed the level. That's where he is now. Standing strong at number two on the pound-for-pound pound list of mine, which is what should be the official list, Chris Cyborg, who, by the way, at 232 is going to put a hole in Amanda Nunez's face. And the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter, in the UFC. Has to be. Who else? DC. D he is locked and loaded in that number one listing. And. I mean. Look. Here's how, here's how I rank him. Just to let you guys know. If you're inactive. You're not on the list. Okay. If you're suspended. You're not on the list. If you're retired. You're not on the list. If you're gone. You're not on the list. Only active fighters belong on the pound-for-pound pound list. Okay? And look, no bigger Conor fan than me. For a long time, I don't understand how Conor was on that list. He was inactive. I don't understand how Conor actually just jumped on the official listings. Three spots, and he's coming off of a, a loss and a bad one. A bad one at that, and he jumped three spots. I don't know how in the world that happened, but... Um... Coming up this week is one championship, and here's some breaking news. It was supposed to be Angela Lee, who's 9-0, their Atomweight champion, was going for the strawweight championship against uh, Zhang Ning Zhang, who is 13-1 at strawweight. Well, Angela, late last night, early this morning, Japanese time, cracked a vertebrae in her back. She is done. She's done for the time being. Um, that fight is scratched off, and now the new main event, they are unifying their bantamweight champion between uh, Biliano Fernandez and uh, Kevin Bellington. That should be a good scrap, but not as good as what should have been the main event. Uh, Gary Tonin... Who, if you guys don't know Gary Tonin, while you're looking up Israel Adesanya, look up Gary Tonin. Gary Tonin. 
on the ground, this guy cannot be beat. This, this guy is one of the best grapplers to ever walk the face of the earth. Plain and simple. Th this guy is... This guy will tie you into a, into a large Shea Stadium City Field pretzel and then squeeze some mustard on top of you when he's done with you. Okay? That's how good Gary Tonin is. Um, so, that's that. We have LFA 53 coming up. Then is Fight Night 139, which is the 25th anniversary. The actual day, the, the, the 25 years to the day of the first UFC card going down in Denver. Obviously, it's the Korean Zombie against Yair Rodriguez now with Frankie Edgar pulling out. We have... Uh, Let me just check that. Oh, sorry, Will. I, hit me up with those questions. Well, at least one of those questions next week. And we'll, we'll see you in the raffle. Um, obviously, the, the blood feud between Cowboy Cerrone and Mike Perry. Uh, Benavides and Borg, which might be one of the last flyweight fights in the UFC. Amanda ABC Cooper against... Uh, Ashley Yoder, and that is such a hugely important women's fight. The loser of that fight looks like she's going to get cut. Now, I got a skadoodles, but here's what I want all of you guys to do. Check out CycloneComedy.com. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. Click share. Keep it right here because in just a few minutes from now, pinups, cool comic, pinups, Blah, 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 blah. Pinups, cool cats, and comics. I mean, if you if I'm going to plug them, I might as well give them the right plug, right? I don't want to rename their show because then you know they're going to jump on top and pound me because I'm old and I'm frail. Listen, guys. Until next week, I am Cyclone saying, just because you are not an athlete doesn't mean you can't be an athletic supporter. Bye bye.